Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about Robert Downey Jr. and the Sherlock Holmes franchise and what he was involved in and how it's being revived on HBO Max. I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's get into it, shall we? Here we are, bounding into comics, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at this article, shall we? Robert Downey Jr., HBO Max, reviving Sherlock Holmes as a film, TV, extended universe. You know, I've never personally watched any of these movies. I think they were received okay. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., great actor, great comeback story. This dropped today, J.B. Augustine, bounding into comics. After a decade of mostly silence, the hopes of further adventures for Robert Downey Jr.'s more rough-and-tumble Sherlock Holmes are moving forward, but not in the way you were expecting. You know, Iron Man 2 is an underrated gem. I'll go ahead and say it. You out of your goddamn mind. Son of a bitch! Son of a bitch! For years, it seemed like the next thing for this franchise was the third film. However, in a new development, The Hollywood Reporter received word RDJ is taking it in a different direction and bringing HBO Max into the mix. Downey, his wife Susan, and Sherlock producing partner Lionel Wigram are going all in with two, yes, more than one series for the streamer. Sadly, the details are a guarded secret and it's unknown if the MCU megastar plans on acting in either of them. So so what do we really know at this point? You know, we have the details that the show is going to go to HBO Max. RDJ is going to be in charge of with his wife Susan, the production team from the movies. Yes, we know that. But we don't know where it's going to center, where the story is going to lie. I'm going to have to go watch these two movies. I've never seen either of them. I literally was not aware there was two of them. I'm not the biggest Sherlock Holmes fan, although I did just read a Sherlock Holmes mystery to my son. Uh, I believe it was The Hound of Baskerville was the book that I read him. And I've had it since I was a child. I, I was never a huge Sherlock Holmes fan. I did enjoy the mystery aspect of it. You know, as a kid, it's, it was new to me. My mother introduced me to the, the books. You know, I've seen some of the older stuff, but I've never seen the RDJ iteration of it. And I definitely did not take the time to watch the Will Ferrell and John C. Riley version. <laughs> He has a working relationship currently with HBO as an executive producer on their Perry Mason revival. There's another one, Perry Mason. I wonder if they're going to use the Ozzy Osbourne song for a lead into the show. A character with similar proclivities to Holmes, so Downey is fairly ensconced behind the camera for such projects. Arthur Conan Doyle's timeless and crafty detective, whose tales draw on Doyle's own experience trying to catch Jack the Ripper, is foremost among classic literary icons in portrayals and screen adaptations. 75 actors in total have graced the screens big and small as Holmes, setting the world record. People were up in arms about Enola Holmes because they thought it was a gender swap, whereas I guess there was a book series with Sherlock's sister as a detective, but the caveat to that being the reasons they're doing that now are not because this character's pre-existing. They're like, oh, we can get rid of another white male and replace it with a female. Guaranteed that was the motivations behind Enola Holmes. Yup! A few of the most noteworthy names other than Downey to wear his hat and smoke his pipe during the last century are Henry Cavill, Basil Rathbone, Benedict Cumberbatch, Johnny Lee Miller, Christopher Plummer, and the obscure and underrated thriller Murder by Decree. The last time RDJ played the Victorian Man of Mystery was 2011 in Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows, opposite Jared Harris as Holmes' arch nemesis. The yin to his yang, Joker to his Batman, Moriarty. Uh, Jared Harris is an excellent actor. He was great in the AMC original, The Terror. To a lesser extent, uh, he was a bright spot in Morbius. I just like him as an actor. Having seen him in multiple projects now, uh, across an uh, array of genres, Jared Harris is an excellent actor uh, and really brought something to Morbius. Just like Matt Smith did. You know, it was a bad movie, but good actors. So I'm kind of interested to go back and watch the RDJ Sherlock Holmes to see Jared Harris as Moriarty now. Though it has admittedly been stalled for quite some time, have no fear, Sherlock Holmes 3 could still happen. The Hollywood Reporter accuses the threequel of not moving past the development stage, but its attached director, Dexter Fletcher, stated it was merely delayed, albeit indefinitely. The fact 
that interest in the IP never waned as well. There are two, count them, two scripted series based on the prior duo of movies should be adequate proof the demand is accounted for and possibly still flickers the light for production on part three will turn green. So I'm not sure if this will happen as far as cinematically goes, but it looks like there's two shows on the way to HBO Max for uh, production in this universe with RDJ possibly behind the camera, possibly in front of it. Like you said, they're guarding all the details now, which is industry speak for we haven't got everything locked down. We don't want to look bad by throwing information out there and then, you know, retracting or walking things back. This is a time when stories like this, if they're told right, could really hit big and, and do good things for a production company. And I like Robert Downey Jr. a lot. Like I said, the guy has been acting, you know, since the 80s and he's not getting any younger. So while he's still able to play these kind of roles and pull off these kind of things, it would be nice to see him come back. I wish that they hadn't killed him off as Iron Man. This is all part of a bigger plan to replace these male heroes. And we see the MCU, the direction that's going in. You know, even these franchises like Sherlock Holmes, you know, they try to do it with Enola Holmes. And it's like, here, here's Sherlock Holmes' sister. Here, look, girls. You know, here's a female doing what the boys can do, only better. And it's like, eh, is it really better, though? The, the gender swap, race swap stuff is usually indicative of nothing but lazy writing. Now, I said with Enola, there was a book series. I don't, I can't remember because it's been so long since that was relevant, newsworthy stuff to talk about. But I, I know we talked about it uh, last year, a little bit when that show was announced, uh, leading up to it. And as I said, doing my due diligence, I looked into it and I was like, oh, there is pre-existing books. I didn't know how old they were, so... It could be just garbage to your stuff. And I know people that watch the show said she kind of, you know, let him by the nose at points. I might be wrong. You know, I thought I was wrong once, but I was, I was mistaken. So that's it, gang. I don't know what to think about this right now. Uh, could it be, you know, like we said, get stuck in development hell? Will there ever be a third movie? Only time will tell. But I would like to see this. Um, as somebody who watches stuff on HBO Max, it'd be something I'd be interested in. It'd make me go back and watch them. 2009 and 2011 or 12 the article said respectively so i would watch the movies if i knew there was a show that was going to continue in that same universe and kind of pick up the story at some point so i wouldn't mind at all but now i want to know what you think do you guys want more of this universe did you like robert downey jr is Sherlock Holmes, you know, is it something that you enjoyed at the time and you've kind of moved on from and would rather see, you know, an original story? Uh, as long as it's done right, are you going to watch it is my question to you. So we've got channel member thank yous to do. We've got a word from DSS, Doom Scholar Studios, our friend Alan over there. We've got a P.O. box. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much for all your kind support of the channel. Kazooians, channel members, I will be mailing out your kazoos. You guys need to DM me your address on Twitter where you would like them sent to. I promise I'm not using it for anything else. I'm not going to spam you or anything like that with mail. I'm going to send you your kazoo once I get the logos uh, from Chris Fisk. Big shout out to Chris Fisk for printing our stickers out for the kazoos. I will put them on the kazoos, individually package them, mail them all out to you with an official Pete Daddy Dollar uh, IWE trading card that I've had since I retired from wrestling. So I'll mail that out to all my channel members, all the Kazooians, just as a small token of my gratitude for you putting your faith, your hard-earned dollars into supporting the channel. I'm not asking for it, but if you want to, the option's there. If not, just enjoy the free content, ladies and gentlemen. We live stream twice a week for our subscribers. Members get two live streams a week. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a lot of streaming I do every week for you guys. Plus, we're doing the WCW series. I apologize for the lack of single release videos. I'm gonna be recording a bunch over the course of the weekend to release, not only during the weekend, but over the course of the next week while I'm working on the bigger videos. So that's it, gang. Thank you so much. Please stay tuned for the messages at the end of the video. You know what time it is. Do all the YouTube things. I don't need to tell you. You guys know. I'm Etepo Kui to The Place to Be Reviews. I've been here with all of you. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow, and I'll catch you on the next one.
Tony Oskowitz from Dune Scholar Studios again. If you're interested in seeing our efforts to make entertainment great again, or if you're interested in helping us do it, I'll ask you to get a look at our website, www.dss-ent.com. Our first gra online graphic series is there to be seen, The Last Survivor's Forgotten Son, based on a novel written by myself and Mr. Declan Finn. As of right now, the story is still in the prologue, although I can promise you you'll see more from our artist, Danielle Stover, in the near future. That's www.dss-ent.com. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot to tell you. Uh, do you want to send us stuff? Because this is how you send us stuff. We have a P.O. Box now. That's right. P.O. Box 924, Prudenville, Michigan, 48657. If you have anything you'd like to send in to the place to be reviews, that's where it goes, and that's where your packages will be coming from as well when I ship things out to you, my Kazooians. I could do this all.